Gregor Mendel conducted experiments to answer one of the fundamental questions of heredity. What are the basic patterns in the transmission of traits from parents to offspring? In this recreation of Mendel's historic experiments, you will have the opportunity to predict the outcome of two types of genetic crosses using a Punnett square. In this first example, the plants being mated differ in just one trait. One plant is homozygous for the dominant purple flower allele of a gene. The other is homozygous for a recessive white flower allele. To show the mating, we arrange the parent plants along two sides of the square. Note that each parent produces a single type of gamete. The genotype of each gamete produced by one parent, shown on the top, is brought down into each of the squares below it. Likewise, the genotype of each gamete produced by the other parent, shown on the left, is moved into each square to the right. The Punnett square helps us predict the genotypes of the offspring. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the offspring. Drag the correct phenotypes to each square in the grid. Notice that all of these offspring have the same flower phenotype as the purple flowered plants in the parental generation. In the offspring, called the F1 generation, the white phenotype disappears. If we mate these heterozygous plants to each other or allow them to self-pollinate, what kinds of offspring would you expect? From the choices given, select the correct gametes to place on the two sides of the Punnett square. Okay, so in this case what we end up with, we end up with uh, both of them are heterozygous in this case. So what we are crossing in this case, all of them are heterozygous and uh, as we know this caps P is dominant trait over small p. So that's why the color remains the same. So phenotype remains the same but they are not homozygous, they are heterozygous. Now as a result we must say uh, these are the examples of ours. So these are the gametes which are being produced at this particular time. Now. Uh, let us continue. Using the information provided, predict the genotypes of the offspring. Drag the correct genotypes to each square in the grid. Now here, what will be the genotype? Now as you can see, uh, these, these are coming from the father, suppose these are coming from the, from the mother. Now uh, what we are uh, tend to do in this punished square, we are just uh, multiplying all this up. So caps p caps p, so this will be this. Caps p small p, so this will be that. And uh, Again, caps p small p. So this one and last one is a small p, small p. That will be the it. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the offspring. Drag the correct phenotypes to each square in the grid. Okay, so uh, what will be uh, the phenotypic choices? Now as we are having caps p, caps p, so it's dominant, so this will be that. And uh, So caps p, small p, again, it, it, though it's heterozygous, but still it is uh, having the one dominant trait, so the answer will be dominant one. Again, in this case too, it is the, it is the heterozygous, but still heterozygous dominant, uh, heterozygous is definitely like that. So in the fourth one is small p, small p, that means the trait is uh, totally recessive, so it will be white. Let's move on. This first series of crosses recaps the result of a mating in which the parent plants differ in a single trait. The parent plants are homozygous for the dominant and recessive alleles. Their F1 offspring are heterozygous and show the dominant purple flower phenotype. The next generation, called the F2 generation, reveals a typical 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes. The recessive white flowered phenotype reappears in this generation after having disappeared in the F1 generation. The two series of crosses shown here illustrate a mating of peas in which the parent plants differ in two traits. These traits are round versus wrinkled texture and yellow versus green color. Each cross yields a 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes in the F2 generation. If the two heterozygous F1 plants were crossed, what genotypes and phenotypes would result? These homozygous parent plants differ in both the R and the Y genes. The round yellow P has dominant R alleles for a round phenotype and dominant Y alleles for a yellow phenotype.
The wrinkled green pea has recessive R alleles for a wrinkled phenotype and recessive Y alleles for a green phenotype. From the choices given, select the correct gametes to place on the two sides of the Punnett square. Okay, now from this, uh, this is totally dominant, homozygous dominant, and in this case, this is the homozygous recessive one. So, what will be the gametes that are produced? So, in this case, uh, all about the combination. So, uh, one of these alleles will come to make the gamete. So, in this case, one small r, one small y. So, small r, small y uh, here, yes. And another small r, another small y, that, that, that's what left here. So, we put it here. Now, in this case, again, the same way, caps r, caps y will be separated and again caps R caps Y will be separated. So that will be uh, the figure. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the offspring in each square of the grid. Drag your selections from the phenotype choices. Okay. Now in this case, as you can see, uh, the cross is already been given, like uh, caps R small r, caps Y small y. So all this multiplied rule is given here. But now we have to find the phenotypic ratios. Now as we know, if we are having homozygous, that will be two type. Homozygous dominant. If it is dominant, it will be yellow. Another one homozygous uh, possibility is recessive. If, if it is homozygous recessive, the answer is uh, this green wrinkled. But uh, another probability will be there. One is called uh, the heterozygous. Now heterozygous, if it is heterozygous in nature, now uh, it, the answer will be varying. Like in this case, homozygous for R, homozygous for uh, so so R is dominating, and again Y is dominating. So it, though it is heterozygous in nature in this case, but it is R and Y is dominating. That means. It will be round and yellow, so that will be the answer. Now, in this case, we are having dominating R and yellow too, so the, the answer will be this. In this case also, R and yellow, and the fourth case also R and yellow. So the answer in all these cases will be R and Y, that means the round and yellow shaped. Uh, in our P. cross, notice that all of the F1 individuals show the dominant yellow and round phenotypes. The recessive alleles in this generation are present, but the dominant alleles mask the recessive phenotype. If we mate F1 individuals to each other, or allow them to self-pollinate, what kinds of offspring would you expect? Begin by dragging the correct gametes to the two sides of the Punnett square. Now again, we, we need to look for the combinations. Now in this case, four different combinations uh, from each side are possible. Now caps R, caps Y is definitely one combination. Then caps R small y is another combination. Then we'll go for small r uh, caps y. This is another combination. And again, small r small y is another combination. Uh, the same way in this case, because we are crossing all this heterozygous plan. So all of this will be remain the same. So caps R caps y, uh, caps R small y, then small r caps y, and then small r small y. Okay. Now move on. Using the information provided, predict the phenotypes of the F2 offspring. Drag your selections from the phenotype choices. Okay, now we need to f figure out the phenotype choices from here. So, what will be the result of R, 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 Y, Y? So, all are the dominant, so it will be round and yellow. In other case, we are having, uh, uh, so again, uh, this. In third case, we have caps R, small r. Again, dominating uh, Y is there, so the result will be this. In fourth case, we are having uh, also the R and Y, because that, that will be also there. So, again, in this case, R, R, caps Y. One caps Y is there, so re uh, round and yellow. In this case, R, both of the R is there, so round and no caps y is there so so the, the answer will be green so round and green will be the answer now in this case caps are that means round and yellow again now in this case uh, round but uh, y caps y is not there so round but green in this case round but yellow uh, round and yellow is also the answer in this case round and yellow too in this case uh, wrinkled uh, because no caps are is there so wrinkled but why is there so you yellow so wrinkled yellow in this case uh, wrinkled again and yellow so again wrinkled yellow in this part we are having the round yellow again and in this case round because caps are is there uh, but wrinkled so round uh, y is not there so 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 it will be uh, round but it is not yellow it is green so that is that so uh, in this case, wrinkle and yellow, and the fourth one and the ra last one, which is not neither having caps R nor having caps Y, so it is wrinkle and green. So that will be the answer.
When the genes for two traits are considered, the F2 plants have phenotypes in a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. 9 are round and yellow, 3 are round and green, 3 are wrinkled and yellow, 1 is wrinkled and green. This phenotype ratio of the F2 generation is typical of a cross in which the parental generation differs in two traits that assort independently of each other. According to Mendel's principle of independent assortment, the genes behave independently of each other during meiosis, resulting in this predictable ratio of phenotypes in the offspring. Although our cross involved a difference in two traits, we can examine each trait individually to see the typical three to one ratios of single trait crosses. There are 12 round peas and four wrinkled peas, or a ratio of three round peas for every wrinkled pea. There are also 12 yellow peas and four green peas, or a ratio of three yellow every green pea. In the group of yellow peas, there are 12 round peas and three wrinkled peas, making a ratio of three round peas for every wrinkled pea. And in the group of green peas, there are three round peas and one wrinkled pea, again, making a ratio of three round peas for every wrinkled pea. Regardless of the color phenotype, the texture ratios will always be three to one. Similarly, regardless of the texture genotype, the color ratios will always be three to one. These results are typical for traits that assort independently.